So mine, mine was a bit more specific and in fact, a problem that really that nobody else in the business should ever see. And if they do see or feel an impact from this problem, then it means that something's gone wrong. So it's more sort of a preventative uh, problem that I wanted to tackle. Um, the title is reducing the data warehouse overnight build times, which is the, the time it takes the automated processes to gather data from all of our source systems and, and transform that into uh, meaningful information that we can report on so that uh, all reports are ready when people need them. Uh, <clears throat> so just walking through that, step one was the background. Um, long pieces of code collectively called a batch run each run each night and extract uh, extract data from those source systems um, and structure that into the data warehouse ready for those reports to be used by the business. Uh, this has to be completed outside of business hours to ensure that the reports are available when people need them. Um, and we're also seeing, although the business was never strictly nine to five, we are seeing that with working from home, the impact uh, has been that business hours are certainly more flexible and people start earlier and finish later and, and really expect that the reports are, are available when they when they want to work. So um, that kind of reduces our time where our our overall batch needs to run. Um, looking at that as a, a simple graph, we've got, uh, it takes around 10 hours per day to run currently. Um, I, our ideal situation, which we think we can get to by the end of this year is uh, to reduce that to eight hours a day and ultimately like to be running consistently around six hours a day so that uh, we've got plenty of capacity there to both grow and uh, do everything we need. So breaking that down, we'll start with the 10 hours again. We've got um, 10 hours. What does that look like? Uh, what takes the time? So breaking that into minutes, we've got the data warehouse taking 350 plus minutes, that legacy CRTBI, which we just talked about, taking uh, over four hours. So a big chunk of the time is, is spent on that. Uh, we've got Cognos and a couple of other smaller databases run that are less chunky. So given that we've recently put together this data warehouse piece and a lot of it is replacing what legacy information we had in both Cognos and the, the old systems, um, it was appropriate to focus on drilling further into the legacy uh, CRTBI database, which accounts for 37% of the whole time. and just recapping there, the gap is 20% that we want to come down by. So um, that's a real, really worth looking into. Breaking that down into what it does, there's data population and then the processing of that data. And we can see that the vast majority of the time, still still 224 minutes it takes to populate that data. So that's looking at the data in SAP and a couple of other places and then pulling that data out into our reporting table. In um, checking this all works, we're working towards the end of September, as we said, and we should notice that then this red part of the script, which will be running every night until then, will suddenly be switched off and we'll be down to nine hours, um, closing one hour of the gap. Key point here to pick up is that we can learn, we can apply the process from the learning uh, of what we've done through all of this which will allow us to reduce the time and ultimately turn off the rest of the CRTBI uh, components of the, the batch overall, reducing us by a further three hours. So we'll actually, what we've learned here, we can apply and actually hit the, um, quite conveniently hit our ultimate goal um, of, of reducing us down to six hours per night. Yeah, that, that's actually been the biggest thing that I've, I've written down here that I've taken away from this whole process is this has given both a, uh, it, it, it both points to the fact that we do stop at containment and say that problem's dealt with um, when it's just masked or or, or hidden. Um, and, and also it gives me a way of, of uh, explaining that to other people as well, saying, although the problem may have disappeared to you, it's still there and it's going to cost us money or it's going to uh, impact us adversely down on the line. So yeah, I think that's that's the biggest takeaway I've had from this.